One of the nice changes in CAM350 and DFM stream version 14 is the collection of all of the analysis that was scattered throughout the tool in previous versions to a centralized location. The Analyze ribbon now contains all of the analysis that we might want to run on a design. So everything from Netless Compare to Design Compare to the Design Analyzer which is, allows us to qualify vendors or generate a report of the minimums of our design and then the checklist based analysis in the streams rules editor or even the ability to run individual analysis uh, on their own. Let's go ahead and load up a set of Gerbers in NC just to take a look at how we've made the netless compare option much easier to do in this version. So I browse out to a set of Gerber data and some NC data. You can see that there's some partial vias in here. There's also an IPC D356 netlist, which will load. New in this version is the ability to set the layers that the partials go through right in the import process. I can also set the plating characteristics in the import process. Once I hit finished, it'll prompt me to extract a netlist, which is always a good thing for running analysis. We now understand the connectivity throughout the design. And we can simply go to the external nets icon under the analyze ribbon and just go to run and we can run the netlist compare. So since it's already extracted a netlist from the graphics, we can simply just compare that netlist to the IPC356 netlist and if we get any differences, those will show down here at the bottom under the new Air Explorer. More on that in a second. But no longer do you have to jump back and forth between multiple menus to run netlist comparison and the results are shown in the same centralized location as any other analysis that will run. Let's take a look at design comparison. This has changed in version 14 as well. I now browse to the design that I want to compare against. All the requirement is is that it's a .cam file the source of that .cam file could be anything. It could be Gerber's and NC, it could be ODB++, could be IPC2581, as well as the design I'm comparing against. So we don't limit you on what the source of the data is that you're using for this graphical comparison. If I hit load, it'll go ahead and load that design in. Once the second design is loaded, I can go ahead and run the comparison as long as my layer mapping is correct. If I need to change it, I can change it here and change a layer that's to be compared to a different one if the mapping is incorrect or if there's no mapping at all. So I simply hit run and it's going to go through layer by layer and do a graphical compare. And it's pretty quick for 20 layers. It went through it that quick in real time. And like everything else in version 14, errors show up down here at the bottom. And uh, it'll show you maybe missing or extra holes or if we've added some fill in some areas that weren't there on the previous version. So this is how Design Compare works in version 14. One more thing though on Design Compare is once I've done the comparison, if I don't want that second design in this database, I can hit delete and it will delete the imported design. So I'm left with the original design I had in this database. The design analyzer has been redesigned in this version as well. It now has multiple uses. Yes, I can create a report based off of the minimums in the design, but I can also use this to qualify vendors and look at their capabilities and then see if this current design matches their capabilities. So I build up a vendor list 
and each of these board shops has different capabilities. I can do things like put in lead times in quantities and then just tell the software to analyze to the vendors and basically it's going to go through and extract all the minimums and then compare it to their capabilities and put a check mark where they can do it and an X where they can't do it or maybe it requires extra engineering uh, at a particular board shop. You could also do this to prototype runs versus volume runs or even everyday runs through the board shop to what we used to call engineering runs that take someone to be involved at every step in the process. And here you can see that uh, it has qualified these particular board shops based on their capabilities versus the, uh, the design we have loaded. The streams editor, not too different in this version than in previous versions. You go to a checklist and you can see all of the values here but what is different in this one is I can now pull up the copper spacing parameters and set those as groups as opposed to having to go through each individual one and set those but as in previous versions if I want to simply run my checklist I can choose to run it down here at the bottom of the screen And as with all the other checks, when there are errors, we go to the Error Explorer down here at the bottom, and we no longer need this window, so we can go ahead and get rid of it. We can still use charting to see groups of errors. We can select bars in the bar chart and validate directly from the chart so that we're only left with a few items that we really need to go out and investigate. We can click on individual errors and go to them. We can even view errors in 3D. So we can go over here into the 3D mode and take a look at an error, look at the whole barrel versus the copper, which is this particular error. So streams works a lot like it did in the past with the exception of it being separated from the errors and all the errors showing up down here in the uh, Air Explorer. But another thing I can do is I can run checks interactively. So I could just go to annular ring for instance and run my annular ring, set a value for maybe all my annular ring checks and then just run that annular ring against the design. And again, the results will show down here in my Air Explorer. And as you can see, there's different types of data and different options here for each one of these. Copper spacing, minimum feature, copper geometry, looking for slivers, check specifically for negative planes, solder mask, assembly, silk screen, paste, drill and mill. So each one of those can be brought up in a menu similar to this right here and run the, just that particular type of check. And again, using the uh, air charts a good way to validate things like annular ring checks because you usually have groups of errors as opposed to individual. I can also define rule areas in here if I want to run a particular set of analysis in a particular area and I can also set up the cross probing uh, to the CAD tools that are supported uh, via cross probing. Another new feature in this version is the ability to have a default stream. This is my default stream and I specified that back under the options menu. I can go to the streams editor. I can browse to a default stream that will always be available anytime I want to run analysis on a design. We've even included a default stream with the shipping version that comes from a major board shop. Uh, you can start running analysis right out of the box. You may end up adjusting the parameters, but we do give you a real-world stream right out of the box. So these are the changes to the analysis capabilities and the combining of all of those into one ribbon here in version 14.